Greetings, fellow freethinkers. The event you're about to watch was hosted by the Center for Inquiry, an educational and outreach organization dedicated to defending and promoting science, reason, secularism, and free inquiry in every area of human endeavor. My name is Justin Trottier, and as Executive Director of CFI Canada, I would like to take a moment to tell you a bit about us. CFI Canada currently incorporates CFI Communities for Inquiry in Calgary, Montreal, and Vancouver over 30 affiliated student organizations from coast to coast, and of course our headquarters here at the Centre for Inquiry Ontario. CFI Ontario, located in the heart of downtown Toronto, is the first Canadian branch of CFI and is the first dedicated event and meeting space for all humanists, skeptics, and freethinkers in the nation. Our mandate encompasses a robust public education series, campus outreach to a growing network of student freethought groups, community outreach and social services, to provide secular and humanist alternatives to religiously monopolized services and activities, and a lending library and media center that, among other things, broadcasts videos like this across the planet. To learn more, please visit us at www.cfiontario.org. To get on our email list or to learn how you can support our movement, such as by becoming a friend of the center, a CFI donor, a volunteer, or to launch or affiliate a new campus or local group, contact us today at Ontario at centerforinquiry.net. That's C-E-N-T-E-R. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the video. It sounds uh, like a lot of information, and it is. Uh, gravity's become a complicated business. Uh, for Isaac Newton, there was less to worry about However, it was not simple because he had to invent the subject effectively. So, uh, I'll start with an introduction and then I'll go on to cosmology, discuss modified gravity and dark matter, and then uh, modified gravity, which I call MOG, modified gravity, MOG cosmology, the origin of inertia and space experiment test of MOG, does dark energy exist? modification of stellar collapse of black holes, and conclusions. <coughs> There'll be only two places where you see mathematical equations, and this is just to give you a taste of the fact that there is mathematics involved, and how complicated the subject is, intrinsically from a technical point of view. Otherwise, it's words. As uh, those of you who have seen my book or read it, there are no equations in the book. And uh, this uh, caused problems for writing the book because I couldn't hide behind equations. <coughs> I had to explain the physics in words. It turned out that this is quite difficult because I have to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1916, Einstein published his new theory of gravity called general relativity. The generalized special theory of relativity, which did not include gravity. In 1919, the theory was validated by the observation of the bending of light during a solar eclipse as the sun's gravitational pull warped space time. So, as you all know, he became famous. There was a ticket parade down. That was through, through New York City when he arrived in America for the first time. And he is now an icon. And uh, we all know who he is. There's a picture of him here actually, on the top. Would we want to modify Einstein's outstanding intellectual achievement? Well, this is what this talk is about. And it's, it's possible the answer is yes. Most physicists have considered Einstein's general relativity to theory to be perfect, in perfect agreement with observational data. However, this is not necessarily true. To explain the expensive, extensive data in astrophysics, astronomy, and cosmology, and retain Einstein's and Newton's gravity, we need to postulate <coughs> large amounts of dark matter and dark energy that are invisible and not detected experimentally. Since the early 1980s, there's been growing evidence that <coughs> Newton's Newtonian and Einstein gravity 
cannot describe the motion of the outermost stars and, and, and gas in galaxies correctly. As you know, uh, the universe consists of uh, galaxies, which consist of stars or orbiting entirely in galaxies. And uh, we should remember, by the way, that in the 1920s, cosmologists and physicists believed that the universe consisted just of our Milky Way galaxy. It was not realized that there was anything outside our own galaxy. So we've come a long way since then in understanding the structure of the universe. Now, if there's only visible matter, that is matter that can be seen uh, that couples to electromagnetism so that we can see it visibly as light, then uh, we cannot account for the uh, motion of stars in a galaxy. So what you find is that the stars move too fast as they go in <coughs> approximately circular orbits in the galaxy <coughs> compared to what is predicted by Newtonian and Einstein gravity. So B is what you actually observe for the velocity versus distance from the center of the galaxy. And A is what is predicted by Newtonian and Einstein gravity. There's overwhelming evidence for this to be true. I don't, there's no question that this is correct. So to save Einstein's and Newton's theories, many physicists and astronomers have postulated that there must exist a large amount of dark matter. So what happens is that you have Einstein's field equations and on the left hand side you have space-time geometry on the left hand side of this equation. I promise not to show equations so I'm not doing it. On the right hand side you have matter. So if you have more matter on the right of the equation you get more walking of space-time from the left-hand side of the equation. Gravity becomes stronger, and therefore the stars inside the galaxy move faster. Simple answer. This invisible and detect undetected matter removes any need to modify Newton's and Einstein's gravitational theories. Invoking dark matter is a less radical less scary alternative for most physicists than inventing a new theory of gravity. <coughs> Here's a poster from a conference. Dark matter, and it's out there. 90% of the universe is made of dark matter. And 96% uh, of physicists and astronomers and cosmologists believe that dark matter exists. 96% of the universe, according to the standard model I'm going to describe, is invisible. The two numbers are coincide this is approximately. So I'm part of the 4% that doesn't agree, <coughs> necessarily. Here's a picture of dark matter. <laughs> so, this is, this, you've seen it, okay? In case you didn't believe it existed. <laughs> now, the, uh, according to the standard model of what's called the standard model of cosmology, of gravity, uh, the, the green is what's called dark energy. I don't have to explain what that is. It's about 70% of the total amount. This pi, total pi, constitutes all the matter and energy in the universe. This is the cold dark matter. This is baryons. Baryons are the same as protons. Like hydrogen atom is made of a proton at the center of an electron orbiting it. And we're, I'm made of hydrogen, I'm made of baryons, okay? So I'm only a miserable 4% of, of what is in the universe, which is quite humbling, according to these people. 